if I go into today's message, I want to give you a prophetic warning. Uh, one of the, the spirit that God has given to the body of Christ is to descend. I want you to know that the main target of the COVID-19 Christians are the target, and the gospel is the target. Every time we think that there is an advancement for us to go, this virus mutates. While unbelievers can gather in thousands and hundreds of thousands, no one talks. But the first alert they send is to Christians. Oh, you know, religious gatherings and this and that. And what you don't know is this. We are the people keeping this planet safe. <laughs> if we stop functioning, there's not going to be any planet. We are the foundation that keeps this planet going. I get irritated sometimes when these alerts come and Christians are the first ones to say, you know, we aren't going to meet. If you don't want to come, that's your business. Stop sending me those trash. We have to look for ways to reach out to unbelievers. We wasted two years gone. Thank God in team. I don't know what you did with your past two years, but I walked like the way I've never walked in my entire life. I was just discussing with Bishop Cardin, and I told him, I said, you guys told me, many of the elders told me, you are too much in a hurry. Stop, stop. If I had listened to you, we won't have this building. Because some of the people who gave, if they had known that there was going to be pandemic, they wouldn't have given at all. If God is going 120, go with him. If he's going 20, go with him. The problem we have is, we are too logical. You can't be spiritual and logical at the same time. We just have to move with the spirit of God. Officially, I can tell you now, I'm, I'm not one of those who peddle conspiracy theories. I normally take my time to listen to the Holy Spirit and also to check through the scriptures. And as I check through the scriptures from last year till now, God has consistently told me, said, declare the end of days. I'm not going to declare it so that you can panic. I'm just going to declare it so that you can rearrange your priorities. Stop buying mansions and start supporting the gospel. Your mansions will perish. Some of you are not wise at all. You're trying to save this planet when you should be saving the souls in it. This planet you love so much is going to be destroyed. And I don't want to be in it when the destruction comes. You've already seen signs. I wish I can tell you that the storms are going to stop. That's why I didn't bother to talk about storms and earthquakes again because God told me from now on it's going to come with fury. You are going to experience the worst disaster that this planet's ever known. You cannot save what God is going to destroy. It's part of the prophetic words. But I'm not saying we should set fire on our planet. Let's do our part to keep this planet safe. But ultimately, this planet is going to be destroyed. The earthquakes will continue. I just watched one of the U.S. towns in one of the states in a flash. The wind came with so much fire that, that the houses were destroyed. And this is a planet you want to waste your time and invest. Invest in souls. I'm done with the first and second stage of my ministry. The third stage of my ministry, any money I gather now is just going to be on propagating the gospel. I'm going to call people from all over the world that the ark is open. Get into the ark because the flood is coming. 
And while I do that, I'm not going to love my life unto death. You know, God holds my destiny. He holds my life. Funny enough, I've never spent time praying for long life. I've only prayed, Lord, there's a reason you created me. Let me fulfill that destiny so that I can stand before you and you will say, well done. I was telling Bishop Calvin, I said, anything you guys need to do for me now, don't hold back because if you are going to wait for some years, it's going to be a surprise. Prophets come <laughs> and when they go, oops, like that. And it's not something you're going to feel sorry for me because I have peace in my spirit. That the end of days has come. So when a man knows that this planet is going to end very soon, will that man be clinging on to life? He's not going to cling on to life. If a house is burning, what do you do? You try to save as many people as possible. Hallelujah. This is not a farewell. But any message can be a farewell. But this is just to tell you that you don't need to panic. Revelation is not the book of horror. It is the book of joy. That thank God, we're going to be somewhere where there is no COVID. Thank God, we're going to be somewhere where there are no tyrants. Thank God. We're going to be in a place where we are going to have a very glorious body. Where you have so much fun and so much energy. So invest on the kingdom. If you are thinking of buying many more houses, that's a wrong investment. Invest on the kingdom. Give the way you've never given before. Love the way you've never loved before. Reach out to people the way you've never reached out before. Hallelujah. Who's happy to be in God's presence? Amen. You know, our theme for 2022 is supernatural encounter. You cannot have a supernatural encounter without being a supernatural person. So my message today is titled Supernatural People. If you have a good Bible, let's open our Bibles briefly to the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of resurrection, of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. Philippians 3.20. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Supernatural people are believers who seek, embrace, and strive to maintain spiritual maturity in Christ Jesus. With the evidence of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, they magnify spiritual values over carnal desires and glorify God in their character and conduct. The lives are purpose driven. So what does it mean to be a supernatural person? You know, we just can't be, you can't say I'm a believer and just be stagnant. That's not what it means to be a believer. Being a believer simply means that you've been plucked from the fire. Being a believer simply means that you are different. The way you talk it's different. Your values changes. I find it difficult to embrace the idea that you are born of God and born of God's spirit and you're spending time with God and you are not going to be like him. It's not possible for you to spend time with God without being like him. You can't be a supernatural person or someone who's had an encounter with God and be afraid of the light. People are sometimes afraid of the light because the light exposes every deed of darkness. But God has called us to be the light. Don't be scared of the light. Be the light. Don't be scared of the fire. Be the fire. Don't be scared of the water. Be the water. 
be the light that the whole world is looking for. Because when you shine as light, you're going to take nations out of foolishness. When you shine as light, you're going to give direction to people. When you shine as light, you're going to become who God has called you to be. Everything that this planet has gone through, there is a solution, and we are the solution to the problems of this world. There's no way you can become the solution to the problem of the world if you are one of the problems. We ought to be the truth in the midst of lies. We ought to be love in the midst of hatred. We ought to be wisdom in the midst of foolishness. We ought to be wealth in the midst of poverty. We ought to carry the power and the fire of God in the midst of everything. I refuse to live as an ordinary person. You must discipline the desires of the flesh. There are two natures that are so conflicting. The nature of the flesh and the nature of the spirit. And these two natures are always at conflict with one another. The things of the flesh desire carnal things. The things of the spirit are opposed to the things of the flesh. You can't be spiritual and be carnal at the same time. I know what it means to have lived in both realms. The carnal realm gratifies the desires of the flesh. When you are carnal, the way you think is logical. When you're carnal, your mind is corrupt. When you're carnal, you are full of hatred. When you're carnal, you find it difficult to forgive. When you're carnal, you want to cheat someone. When you're carnal, you want to have a relationship with someone. Every time you meet a woman, the first thing you want to do is to exploit her body and see how you can gratify your flesh. That is not what it means to be spiritual. But when you're spiritual, you are dead to anger. When you're spiritual, you you're dead to the things of the flesh. When you're spiritual, money does not control you. You begin to control money. Money becomes a slave. You make money because you want to use money as a tool to break down the altars of wickedness. You make money because you want to use it to liberate men and women. You make money because you're thinking of setting this nation free. You're thinking of setting families free. I prophesy that God is going to lift you up to the realm of the spirit where you will see things with the eyes of an eagle. If you believe that shout hallelujah i prophesy that the flesh is not going to lead you to the place of destruction do you know why the flesh is always opposed to the spirit the flesh was made out of dust and the dust is always seeking for the things that are earthly the flesh is always seeking for the things that are pleasurable and at the end product the flesh was never designed to be spiritual if you spend time feeding the flesh there is only one outcome. While your spirit can be saved, your body is going to be destroyed. Your assignment is going to be cut short. The wages of sin is death. I know the gospel is the gospel of grace. But the gospel of grace does not deny that the wages of sin is death. The bad thing about wages, the result does not come in one day. You begin to accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. And one day, the wage master comes and tells you, it's time to go home. But I don't want to go home. No, it's time to go home. Because this is the dividend. This is what you've been doing to your body. Even if you're righteous, righteousness is not going to save you. Because your body, God cannot break eternal laws. God cannot break principles. So you can be a righteous believer, but you are careless with your flesh. He can take you home. Because the wages of sin is death. This body must perish after accumulating sin. Don't destroy your physical body. Preserve it until your assignment is over. Look at your desires. How would you know that you're living in the flesh? Early morning, you want to do something that is not scriptural. You want to do something that outside the will of God. That's when you know that you're living in the flesh. You want to do something that God does not like. But when you're living in the spirit, <laughs> there is this hunger. As the deep hunger for the water, so my soul longer after you. Your spirit begins to thirst after righteousness. 
You wake up with this burden. Who's going to tell the people of Africa that Jesus is coming soon? Who's going to tell Asians that Jesus is coming soon? Who's going to tell Australians that Jesus is coming soon? Who's going to tell Europeans that Jesus is coming very soon? Who's going to tell Americans, North and South, that Jesus is coming very soon? Who's going to tell the people of Antarctica that Jesus is coming very soon? And your spirit begins to yearn. Yeah, here am I, Lord, send me. When your passion is tied to the things of the kingdom, when your passion is aligned with God's passion, then you know, without being told, that you are living in the will of God. Some of you are saying, what is the will of God? It's so simple. The will of God is when your passion and your will is aligned with the will of God. Of God, When your actions conform to the will of God, that simply means you are living in the will of God. People who sincerely embrace Jesus and submit to his lordship never remain the same. They are supernaturally transformed for productivity in all facets of life. You can't follow Jesus and be spiritually, mentally, or physically, or financially bankrupt. He rewards those who diligently seek him. I declare that my God will reward your faithfulness. That my God will lift you up to the place of supernatural abundance. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Second Corinthians 5, 16 to 18. Therefore, from now on, say from now on, from 2022, say from 2022, I will regard no one after the flesh. Now, what does it mean to regard people after the flesh? You know they are sons of God. You know they are born of God. You know they are born of God's spirit. And God is not true with them. But you decide to judge them. Oh, he's a man of God. Why is he lying? He's a man of God. Why is he? Who never lied? Is there anyone in this place who never lied? We grow from glory to glory. If God was patient with you while you were yet perfect, you have to be patient with other people. But I'm not talking about those who have been stagnant for 20, for 30 years. That's dangerous. The Bible tells me that he who is often rebuked, but hardens his heart, suddenly be destroyed without remedy. Growth is a sign of life. If you say you're a Christian and you're a believer, and it's the same scripture you knew 20 years ago, the same pattern of prayer, <laughs> then something is radically wrong. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. God did not give you this ministry, the ministry of condemnation. He gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So if your duty is to find out who is not a Christian and you come to church to look at who is righteous and who is not righteous, that is not the ministry of God. That is the ministry of the devil. This is why sometimes I know what you did last summer, but I keep quiet. Because I don't want to judge anything before it's time. Our ministry is to reconcile men back to God. Not to judge them. Not to point fingers. The ministry of condemnation is a ministry of accusation. The ministry of reconciliation is a ministry of intercession. When was the last time you prayed for that brother, for that sister? If you spend your time pointing fingers and saying this is a man of God and this is not a man of God, then something is wrong. Pray for them. Someone said, when are we going to give up hope? I said, as long as they can come to church, you have no right to give up on them. 
Because the house of God is a place of reconciliation where the destinies of men are reconciled with the destiny of God. It is a place of reconciliation. It is a place of love. This is the last hospital. We were called to reconcile. I love my brothers and sisters in different parts of the world, but I disagree with them when they use Facebook to tear down people who are not saved. That's not the ministry God has given to us. That is a ministry of vengeance. That is the ministry of hatred. That is a ministry of division. When you choose one political party over another political party and say this one is the Christian party and this one is the, the unbelievers party, that's not the ministry of reconciliation. That's the ministry of division. When your candidate wins, you pray for him and he's not your candidate, you curse him all your life. That is not the ministry of reconciliation. Pray for those who are in authority. Not because we voted for them, not because we love them, not because we love what they're doing, so that there can be peace in the Philippines, so that there can be peace in Nigeria, so that there can be peace in all parts of the world. I don't know what the president of my country is doing, and I don't know how he has allowed the country to slide into that chaos, but I will pray for him. I may not support his decisions, but I will pray for him because I love my country. I may not know what your president is doing, but I have consistently prayed for him. I have consistently prayed for all the American presidents, and I have prayed for all the prime ministers of Israel. It does not make me a politician. Pray for those who are in authority so that it can be well with you. Don't pray as a partisan hack. Pray as an intercessor. Ezekiel 36, 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I was talking to one of my daughters. I said, when you talk to someone who is doing bad things and the person does not change and the person continues to harden his or her heart towards the word of God consistently, one year, two, three, twenty, thirty, it may be possible that that person may have crossed the line. Such people, don't put all your investment in them. Look for others who are receptive. I'm not saying you are condemning them, but do not put all your investment in such people because you are going to deprive others who are receptive of the gift of salvation. I said, what is the difference between humans and demons? Humans know how to say, I'm sorry. Humans know how to ask for forgiveness. Did you see the demons who spoke with Jesus asking him to forgive them? They said, do not judge us before the time. Someone said, is it possible for demons to repent? I said, they cannot repent because they have a free will, and that free will is tied towards opposing righteousness. What if they had repented? I said, I'm not going to dwell on what if, but one thing I know, demons are incapable of repenting. So if you are behaving like a demon, ask yourself one question. Are you truly saved? Because you can't be saved and be doing things over and over, things that are bad, things that are detrimental to the things of the kingdom, and you don't feel remorse. There are two types of believers. Those who cross the line and those who have not. How would you know you've crossed the line? You've gone to the place of no return. Look at two people who heard the word. Peter and Judas. Both of them betrayed Jesus. Peter repented unto righteousness. Judas hanged himself. He never asked God for forgiveness. I pray that none of you will end up with the destiny of Judas in the mighty name of Jesus. And why does God give you a new heart? 
When God gives you a new heart, it creates within you the right spirit. It creates within you the right mindset. It is my prayer that this year you will manifest the right spirit and the right mindset in every spectrum of life. John 3.3, 3, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Being born again is not just a confession. Being born again is confessing it, believing it, and walking in what you've confessed. Being born again is conforming to the lifestyle of Jesus Christ. Dying to serve and resurrecting with Christ. Psalm 51 verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Ezekiel 18.31 Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed. Thank God, because he's a God of a second chance. And God is calling unto you today. He said, cast away from you all the transgression which you have committed and get yourself a new heart and a new spirit. That means it is within your power to get yourself a new heart and a new spirit if you cast away all, say all. all. The problem some of you have with righteousness, you say, okay, I will let go of lying, but I will keep fornication. That's not good enough. Because everything you do that does not glorify God is going to bring you down. Say, oh, let go of your anger. Let go of your lying. Let go of fornication. Let go of immorality. Let go of stinginess. Let go of unforgiveness. Say, oh, say, Lord, say, Lord, this year I make a proclamation that I'm walking with you, casting all my burdens Casting all my sins, casting all my compromises aside and embracing righteousness. Say all. all. Why do you have to cast all? Because the little foxes are the ones that destroy the vine. One little thing you leave behind is going to destroy it. Self-righteousness is when you say, well, I followed all the law. I've done everything, but Jesus said, how about giving? Oh, you cannot say you're righteous and you've done all when you still have a stronghold in your life. Say, oh. oh. Some of you may say, well, well, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't womanize, but how about your stinginess? God gave you money so that you can sponsor the gospel, but you kept it. If God gives you something, he may require you from time to time to give it back to him. Why? So that he can multiply your seed. Say all. Oh. Cast away from you all the transgression which you have committed and get yourself a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O house of Israel? That means the transgression you carry can lead to premature death, can lead to spiritual death, can lead to moral death. Now, God is saying you have the power to cast it out of your life. So, what are some of the qualities of spiritual people? One, spiritual maturity. Supernatural people are never stagnant. They strive to attain spiritual maturity through knowledge, prayer, and obedience to God driven by relentless spiritual hunger. Are you hungry? Do you hunger and thirst for righteousness? When you spend weeks not coming to church, that's not spiritual hunger. When was the last time you, you, you called your pastors and bishops to ask them questions? I overwhelmed my pastors with relentless questions because I was hungry for the truth. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Say, put away childish things. You are expected to grow. Grow into all truth. Stop throwing childish tantrums. You come to church, 
just because someone took your seat, you said, I don't want to come to this church again. That's childishness. Grow up. Patience is a sign of growth. Philippians 3, 12. Now that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ has also laid hold of me. Spiritual people strive. They press on. You know the sign of arrogance? When you present a suggestion or, or an opinion to your pastor in a way that suggests that you are trying to teach the teacher. That is foolishness and that is arrogance. Somebody begins to scold you, you turn around and begin to tell the person what to do. That is arrogance. If a superior, if your pastor is scolding you, it is foolish for you to tell him, oh, are you perfect? What about you? That's foolishness. The pastor scolding you knows that he's not perfect. No pastor wants you to make his mistakes. That is why we learn from the mistakes of our mentors. But if you are going to major on those things, then you are not going to have a pastor. Because God does not give you perfect pastors, but he gives you pastors after his own heart. Moses was not a perfect shepherd, but he was a shepherd after God's heart. David was not a perfect shepherd, but he was a shepherd after God's heart. I discovered that many of the prophets, they have temper problems. Maybe the reason they are impatient, they see things you don't see. I don't know. But one of the things I did to myself when God called me into the apostolic prophetic ministry, I worked on myself. I was a very impatient person, extremely impatient. I was into this perfectionist thing, if you don't get the note well, oh my God, you've messed up my entire day. But I realized that if God was patient with me, I need to be patient with people for them to step into it. And it became the opposite because some of my pastors got so angry with me and they called that patience and meekness weakness. Bishop, why are you not doing this to this? Why are you not punishing this? I told some of them, if the way you're asking me to punish this person, if I had punished you, would you have grown? Hallelujah. We press on. Don't think you've attained. Keep pressing. Until... We see him face to face. Every day as I study the Bible, I discover that I know nothing. And I'm open to knowing more. I want to know more. That I may know him. The day you stop learning, you begin to die. You die morally and spiritually when you think you have known everything. Press on. Psalm 42 verse 1. As the deep pants for the water brook, so pants my soul for you, O God. Women, you yearn for your husband all the time. Do you yearn for God? Do you yearn for Jesus? Men, you are sometimes obsessed with the picture of that lady you saw on Facebook. On Instagram and all those things. Do you yearn for Jesus? Do you say Jesus, the lover of my soul? Do you yearn for him? What do you yearn for? You only say praise God when the prophet is coming. And when there is no prophet, 
You don't feel like coming to church. Something is fundamentally wrong with that mindset. The more you yearn for God, the more spiritual you become. Because you cannot say, God, I'm seeking you without you being transformed. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. The best way to be hungry is for you to be hungry. Addiction comes from consuming a certain substance consistently. Be a word addict. Be a God addict. Don't be a drug addict. Don't be addicted to the wrong things. Be addicted to God. Two. Supernatural people are sold out to Jesus. Supernatural people follow Jesus absolutely and make him the focus of their existence. Supernatural people live for God. They live only for Jesus. You cannot give because your wife told you not to give. Are you a supernatural person? Abraham did not consult his wife when he took Isaac and wanted to sacrifice Isaac. If you are a man here and the men in this nation Sorry, I need to say this. Only few are man enough to control their homes. Even some of the pastors and bishops, I don't know what you're doing. The Bible says, if a bishop cannot rule his house, he has no business ruling the flock of God. There was a time my wife was misbehaving and I told her, I said, if you don't stop, I'm going to resign from being the bishop of Tim. If you contradict me again, I'm going to resign because I don't want to be a hypocrite. If I cannot rule my wife and I cannot rule my children, I have no business standing on this pulpit. I said, I'm the law giver of the house. You are the executioner of the law. I'm the provider. You are the manager of the resources. The roles are different. Yeah, they complement each other. And to God be the glory, my wife has never interfered in anything that concerns the ministry. Women learn from that. She has never interfered in any giving. Even when we don't have money, I tell her, send this money to this place. Yes, it's done. You stop your husband from paying tithe because you are angry. You stop your husband from doing things. No, we don't have our business. You are going to destroy your business. Stop it. That's not the way it should be. 2022 is an opportunity for you to change your ways. And there are some kind-hearted men with Jezebelian women as wives who stop their men. If you give to the church, we are going to end the marriage. If your wife tells you, if you give to God, I'm going to end the marriage, let her go. Someone is going to say, oh, Bishop, here we go again. But the truth is, this is how it should be. Take control of your homes, man. I don't want to talk to you, then you refer me to your wife. I don't want to talk to you that way. Take control of your homes. Bring your children in the fear of God. Look at my two girls. If I leave this planet today, I'll praise God because they followed their dad. Not because I'm a terrorist. They followed because they saw Christ in me, the hope of glory. It is not a joke. Leave the gospel you preach. Because the person you see today, tomorrow you may not see him again. Every opportunity, thank God, say thank God. Some people, a minute to 2022, they died. God gave you this new year to put your life right so that you can throw away the old things and run the race with excellence. Say thank God. Do we continue to sing that grace may abound? God forbid. I did some foolish things too. But anytime I do something foolish, 
and God gives me more grace, I say, God, thank you for giving me an opportunity to correct my ways. Take advantage of God's grace. Ride into greatness in the wings of God's grace. Develop hatred for sin. You can't be in the spirit and love the things of darkness. Young ladies, God is putting this in my spirit. There are some relationships you need to end. If you are not ready for marriage, don't stir up the, the passion. Those useless boys touching you in the wrong places, let them go. A boy who can touch you in the wrong places is a man who is stealing you from Jesus. Stealing your passion. Let him go. And parents, you have to be careful how you allow your children to do bad things. I told my wife, I said, if my children are 20 and they are responsible and they want to be married, I'll be the first one to say, you may marry. If you cannot hold yourself, Get married. And if you are not ready to get married, end that relationship because it is a distraction. You can fulfill your destiny without having sex. You can. Don't tell me about temptation. All my life I've been chased by women from every race. Oh, don't say, oh, it's a wood. It doesn't have feelings. I have feelings like you. But I make quality choices. Am I going to be a Romeo or a preacher of the gospel? The choice is up to you. Make up your mind. If the relationship is not going to glorify God, end it. But if you really want to be married, you cannot hold yourself. Marry. But if you are marrying only for sex, the day you satisfy the sexual urge, the emptiness is still going to remain. Only Jesus can fill in the gap. Only Jesus can fill in every gap. A woman who does not know what it means to be satisfied and contented with Christ, even if she marries 20 times, she's going to have problems 20 times in 20 different marriages. Let Jesus be the lover of your soul. I love family, but my joy does not come from my family life. Family life adds to my joy, which becomes happiness. But Jesus is always the focus. That is why if Jesus is your focus, I have lost millions. I have lost loved ones. I have lost so many things. But my joy remains because those things are not the pillars of my destiny. Jesus is. All those wrong pillars, all those wrong altars you're deriving strength from, the flood of adversity is going to sweep them up. Begin to put your trust, your faith in God. Let Jesus be the center of your life and your existence. Be sold out to Jesus. Paul said in Philippians 1.21, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. We live for Christ. The Bible tells me no man lives unto himself. Stop living for yourself. Begin to live for a cause far bigger than yourself. Romans 14, 7 to 8. For none of us lives to himself and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Say, I'm the Lord's. <laughs> Colossians 3.3. 3. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. A man who is dead is not going to respond to a naked woman who stands before him. Because you are dead. Say, I'm dead. John 1, 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The life of Christ which you have is what gives light to your home and gives light to your business. Anybody who carries the life of God 
automatically carries the light of creation. That means wherever you go, you are light. Be light in the financial world. Be light in the world of politics. Be light in every government institution. So shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. 1 John 2, 6. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Was Jesus a drunkard? Was he a liar? Did he have scandals following him? You ought to walk just as he walked. So what grace does is to teach you how to be like Jesus. To conduct yourself the way he conducted himself. And the only way to do that is for you to crucify yourself and to crucify the desires of the flesh. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Crucification is not by works. It is by grace. It is by faith. I am not righteous because of my works. I am righteous because I have faith in God. The one who is the author and finisher of my destiny. The Bible tells me that he who started this thing in your life is able to complete that which he started. I look forward to perfection because the Bible tells me we move from glory to glory. So don't give up. So Bishop, you don't know the type of desire I have. Have faith in God. God who started that process in your life is going to take away lies from your life. Take away desires that are ungodly. Take you to the finish line. Have faith in him. Because there is a power that walks in. The worst thing you can do for yourself is to give yourself resolution. I tried that many years. Before you get to the fourth day, oops, you've broken everything. Sin takes advantage of the law, telling you you cannot do this. But we must learn. When you try to do it on yourself, it simply means you are magnifying your works. You are telling yourself that I can do it. Paul did not say, I can do all things through my own effort. He said, I can do all things. He says, all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. You will get rid of all your problems. You will get rid of all the pain. You will get rid of everything. Through Christ who strengthens you. Say, I can do it. I can do all things. Not some things. Ordinary people do some things. Supernatural people do all things. Say, all. Oh. Go back to the drawing board. If God is the one inspiring the vision, don't change the amount. Maybe the architect told you that the bill is going to be 50 million pesos or 50 million dollars. Say, thank you, God, because I know that you who started this thing in my life is able to do it all. I can do all things. I can do all things. Because Jesus loves me. Three, supernatural people live productive lifestyles. Supernatural people are productive in every spectrum of life. They know the importance of time and diligently work hard to achieve maximum things in minimum time. That's why the Bible tells us, learn how to number your days and apply yourself to wisdom. Say wisdom. Colossians 1.10, that you walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being faithful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God helps you to unravel the mystery of God. The knowledge of God helps you to unravel the mysteries, the challenges before you. The knowledge of God gives you wisdom to solve uncommon things. Wisdom is doing the right thing at the right time. Wisdom is the right application of truth. Knowledge. John 15, 4 to 6. Abide in me, 
and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. Matthew 13, 21. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. So you must take root this year. Find your fulfillment and root in the word of God. Now, this is going to surprise you. So don't say you have a choice in this. John chapter 15, verse 16. You did not choose me. Tell your neighbor, you didn't choose yourself. You didn't choose Jesus. You thought you chose him, but he chose you. Even before the foundation of the world, he knew you. He called you. And he brought you to himself. The Bible says, no one can come unto Jesus without the spirit. He knew you. But the fact that you are in the church and you're wondering, what the heck am I doing in the church? Is because you have been marked for salvation. Marked for greatness. Marked for eternity. Marked for everything good. Say, he chose you. Those he chose, he foreknew. Those he foreknew. He preordained for greatness. That means your salvation is sealed. Bishop Cardin, he chose you. Sister Vicky, he chose you. Pastor Amar, he chose you. Pastor Chan, he chose you. He chose every one of you. Pastor Wilbert, he chose you. Say, I'm chosen. You don't mess with the chosen ones. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. That your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. You know what? The reason some of you are suffering is because you are not walking in the fullness of the plan. He chose you. Then he gave you the appointment. And from the appointment, the appointment empowers you to bear fruit. And when you bear fruit, you are telling God that your investment is working. And therefore, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it for you. There are some prayers that only obedience can answer. What have you done with your appointment as a leader? Bear fruit so that you can ask God for more. The Bible says he who has more, more will be given. But he who has little that has done nothing, even the little he has will be taken from him. May the Lord not take his gifts from you in the mighty name of Jesus. May God multiply every fruit in your life in Jesus' name. Four, supernatural people are spirit inspired. Supernatural people know the voice of the Holy Spirit and they respond to his guidance positively. Romans 8.14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. The sons of God are not emotional people. They are led by the Spirit of God. What leads you? What guides you? Are you inspired by fear or faith? Allow God to guide you all through the year. There are times that he may take you through the valley of the shadow of death. But do not be afraid. He's going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. In the presence of COVID. In the presence of sickness. In the presence of lack. He's going to prepare a table before you. He will make every crooked path straight. John chapter 16 verse 12 to 14. This one is going to blow your mind. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot be them now. Did you know why Jesus spoke to the people in parables? Do you know why? Okay. Teachers, 
What do you do when you are teaching people whose brains are not formed enough to understand what you're teaching them? What do you do? You put things there. A, B, what is this? Book. B-O-O-K. Say it, book. You can even teach dogs and animals through symbols, through parables. That was how unformed the human mind can be without the Holy Spirit. So Jesus said, there are things I want to teach you. There are things. Uh, that was why Apostle Paul shocked the world. Because Apostle Paul was taught by the Spirit. He said, there are things I want to teach you. But you cannot take them. Your brain is not transformed enough to take it. <laughs> Sister Vicky, those people who don't speak in tongues, who don't have the Holy Spirit, who, who did not give the Holy Spirit expression in their lives, they are going to go to heaven. But they will go to heaven as manual believers. They are going to be struggling. But those who have the Spirit of God, they go to heaven as digital believers because the Holy Spirit teaches us all things. It teaches you all things. One of my sons in the faith, you know him, Pastor Ebenezer. I went to Texas as he was ministering the gospel. He was calling people's names, the date of birth, the home address, the church froze. I said, that's my son. That is what the Holy Spirit does. It gives you specific things. Are you surprised that he has the type of ministry I have? Because lions give birth to lions. The Spirit of God teaches you all things things. Even the things that the, the, the professor say is so complicated, he teaches you all things. When we're building that cathedral in Kesson province, the architects, when they showed me their plans, they were shocked when I said, no, if you calculate the distance here and this year and this year, some of the difficult problems they had I solved it. They asked me, they said, did you study architecture? I said, I don't need to study architecture because the Holy Spirit teaches me all things. When we're building this place, I said, how do we maximize the space? I gave my input. Is this place not beautiful? The Holy Spirit teaches us all things. When my daughter was doing a, a song, I had to rewrite the thing, rearrange it. They were doing the video. I had to play a key role. The Holy Spirit teaches us all things. Say all things. So what happened to the many things that Jesus said he wants to teach us? Thank God he sent the Holy Spirit to teach us the many things that Jesus could not teach us. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he is, he will speak. He will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Open up yourself. It's going to tell you about the stock market. It's going to tell you when to buy and when not to buy. It's going to tell you about the right investment. Many of the people who are having calamities in their business is because they are not into financial covenant with God. Because if you are in a financial covenant with God, even if you are about to make a mistake, God is going to send his prophets to warn you, don't buy that stock. It is dangerous. Buy this stock. Covenant yourself and your wealth with God. And another thing that God is teaching us in these end times, never commit your finance to people who don't have covenant relationship with God because your money is going to go down the drain. Don't do business. In those days, I used to say, you can do business with unbelievers. Don't do business with them. Look for believers and do business with them. 
It is only when it is impossible. Maybe they are the only option. Then you can do business with them. Then the same grace upon you that made Joseph bless the house of Potiphar will be upon you. If there are choices, always choose believers over unbelievers. You can only choose unbelievers when there are no alternatives. Hallelujah. John 14, 17. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be with you. The world cannot accept the ways of the Holy Spirit because they don't know the Holy Spirit. John 14, 26. But the helper, say but. Thank God for such times. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that are said to you. He will bring to your what? Remembrance, some things, all things. You can't be a believer and be suffering from dyslexia or whatever you call it. Or how do you call that disease? That memory loss disease. I'm not in any way looking down on people who have it. I sympathize with them. But I'm saying that as believers, your inheritance in Christ is not memory loss. So begin to declare your memory in Christ Jesus. Say, my mind is sound. My memory is sound. I will never forget the things that God has taught me. Five, supernatural people live by faith. Supernatural people rely on God always for everything because they live by faith without fear. Romans 1.17, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Proverbs 28.1, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. John 14.27 Peace, I live with you. Say peace. Anybody who is incapable of enjoying peace is outside the will of God. If they have to give you antidepressant for you to have peace, it's either you're outside the will of God or ignorant of God's will. How do you know a mature believer, a supernatural person? Peace. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. When you allow fear to come into your heart, trouble comes into your mind. Romans 8, 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Say, I cannot be afraid. Because the spirit of fear does one thing, and one thing alone. It leads you to bondage. It holds you in perpetual bondage. Every fear in form of imagination that has kept you in bondage has stolen your peace. Every fear manifesting in your mind, I cast it down today in the mighty name of Jesus. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Then finally, supernatural people are spiritually stable. A person who is not spiritual is unstable. One moment they are preaching this message, the next moment they are preaching another message. One moment they are full of love, the next moment they are full of cursing. Something is wrong. A fountain cannot bring out sweet and bitter water at the same time. Make up your mind. You can either be a lion or a wolf. Supernatural people are spiritually stable. Supernatural people are stable, discerning, and wise because of the solid food of the world which they consume consistently. Therefore, they are not easily deceived. 
they are men and women of strong conviction. Hebrews 5.14 But solid food belongs to those who are full of age. Say solid food. Some of you, you have been eating junk on internet. If you see team members, they are solid. But if you see the ones who have been eating junk, they speak differently. Stop eating junk outside. Stay with the world. Don't look for things that will gratify your sin. Look for things that will rebuke you of your sin. The reason some of you look for food like this is because you are doing something wrong and you want a preacher that agrees with your sinful lifestyle. He said on that day, they will live for themselves. They will look for teachers. Teachers who will tell them it's okay to do this. It's okay to do this. It's okay to do this. Stay with the truth. And eat solid food. But solid food belongs to those who are full of age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. We need to be like the Berean Christians. When Paul stood before them, they began to check whether what Paul was preaching was in the gospel. When we stand before you, don't take everything we give you hook, line, and sinker if it's not in the word of God. Do you understand? And for team pastors, please don't use this pulpit to tell stories again. In 2022, let all your gospel be on the word. Because when you are preaching the word, you don't deviate. But when you start talking about things and that and this and this, that's when the trouble comes. More of God's word and less of your story. First John 2, 14. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. When God says young men, he's not saying only men. Simply means young people. Young people, the word of God makes you strong. The word of God helps you to overcome the evil one. Hallelujah. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit, if you notice, there is nothing like fruits. That means everything must be one. You cannot have love and joy and peace and, and say, oh, I have this, I have this. You must have all. If you don't have, if you have some and you don't have some, that means you are still not manifesting the fullness of of the fruit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. That means love must complement joy, and joy must complement peace, and peace must complement long suffering. Long suffering must complement kindness. Kindness must manifest in goodness. Goodness must be manifested in faithfulness. And faithfulness will manifest gentleness. And gentleness must have the evidence of self-control. Now, I'm going to call out the fruits. If you have them, let's do a roll call. This is 2022, so don't say things you don't have. Hallelujah. How many of you have love in this place? How many of you have joy? How many of you have peace? Long suffering? Kindness? Goodness? Faithfulness? Gentleness? Self control? Some of you said it by faith. And I'm going to say amen to that by faith. Whatever you have accepted, I declare you must manifest it throughout this year and the years beyond in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Finally, 1 Corinthians 2, 14 to 16. But the natural man does not receive the things of God. 
So tell your neighbor, say you cannot afford to be a natural person this year. The reason the disciples of Jesus could not get the fullness of the message of God because the Holy Spirit was not yet given to them. So that means they were still natural and traditional. And so, from this moment, none of you will be natural in the mighty name of Jesus. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who? has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. Say, I have the mind of Christ. So you cannot have the mind of Christ and not be spiritual and not live a supernatural life. Hallelujah. 